Hi everyone, I'm Vikas. I work as a staff engineer at Razorpay. Uh, today I have Rajiv with me uh, to, uh, to discuss about AWS cloud cost optimization activity that was led by him. So before we dig into question, uh, Rajiv, can you quickly introduce about yourself? Yeah, hi, uh, I'm Rajiv. I'm currently working as a uh, principal engineer at Razorpay. Thank you. Uh, so the first question is like, what led to this activity? So why is AWS cloud cost optimization so important? Uh, so uh, Razorpay, since uh, since its start, has always used uh, AWS as the uh, cloud provider for us, right? Uh, uh, and with the kind of e growth we've had over the past six to seven years, we've spent millions of dollars in AWS cost, right. and uh, and and it's only going to increase in, in the future, right? So uh, so we needed a team which could you know uh, track the usage uh, of, of of AWS billing and uh, and to ensure that you know we. Over the period of time, we actually reduce it to uh, as much as possible, right? Uh, we figured that there were multiple levers that we could uh, that we could you know uh, do that uh, will reduce the cost, uh, but not impact the availability and the stability of the system. So yeah, Razorpay Razorpay has so many services, right? And we also use use a lot of AWS services as well. So what did the team prioritize first, or you know what did the team will delegate to first? Um, actually, that was a very easy decision for us because uh, when we looked at the AWS billing module, uh, forty percent of the cost was actually coming from EC2 instances, mm -hmm. right? And uh, because we, we are completely on Kubernetes, mm -hmm. these are the EC2 instances that are running under root under root EPS, right? Mm -hmm. uh, so yeah, so it was easy to pick uh, EC2 first. So what are the optimizations we done on EC2? Uh, yeah, so actually uh, we did a lot of things. Uh, uh, just to uh, state the obvious first. Uh, I mean, we uh, we went ahead and, and bought more uh, savings plan uh, or or reserve instances, right? Uh, another obvious thing to do was to check if our our, uh, our microservices are using uh, you know resources optimally. For example, uh, you know they're not using they're not uh, requesting a lot more resources than they actually need, right? Uh, but we have more than hundred microservices running on production. So how do we actually uh, you know figure it out? Figure out what different services are actually to where you know this misconfiguration has happened, right? So, uh, so what we did was we wrote a custom script which would uh, you know for every service it will go to Prometheus, which is our internal monitoring system, right? It will go to more Prometheus, look at the um, CPU memory graphs for the last thirty days, right? And uh, and uh, and you know, pick the max CPU or max memory uh, value, add maybe probably 20 25 percent uh, over and above as a, as buffer. And and then see how many resources they have actually requested, right? If they requested more than that value, mm -hmm. then then we created an alarm and you know, a request went to uh, the 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 owner of the service that you know what you need to reconfigure your your uh, your requests and limits on uh, on on EKS, right? Uh, another uh, such script was written some kind of similar script, right? Where uh, where we where we saw what are the different services that are actually um, you know, uh, auto scaling very aggressively, right? For example, let's take an example. For example, let's say if there is a service uh, is is uh, auto scaling at a thirty or a forty percent CPU, right? Mm -hmm. uh, rather than probably doing it at 70, 75 percent, right? Uh, so again, we we found out a list of these services, went to the managers, and then um, after the reconfiguration, we we uh, got huge benefits out of it. So anything else was done on EC2? Yes. Um, so we wanted to go big on spot, mm -hmm. right? Uh, uh, we wanted to move away from on-demand service, uh, on-demand instances to two spot, right? Uh, and uh, we f we had to figure it out how what are the different services that can run on spot. By what I mean by this is that you know in spot instances, uh, AWS can at any point of time take away those instances back, mm -hmm. right? Uh, but what happens is uh, two minutes, roughly two minutes before before the instant, before the node actually goes down, mm -hmm. it gives you an interrupt mm -hmm. that okay this instance is about to go down, mm -hmm. right? Uh, so what means is that you need to wrap up all your work within the next two, uh, next two minutes, right? Mm -hmm. uh, so we looked at uh, the access log of all uh, access logs of all the services, and saw what are the different services that are that where the requests are taking more than two minutes, mm -hmm. right? And uh, to our surprise, we found out that ninety percent of our services mm -hmm. were uh, actually uh, where the requests were not taking more than two minutes, right? right. So if a request is, is actually ongoing and we get an error interrupt, the request will be able to grow graceful, gracefully finish. Within the next two minutes, right? Mm -hmm. uh, so yeah. So what we did was created two different ANZs, mm -hmm. right? One ANZ was for spot, and one ANZ was for on demand. Mm -hmm. And any application that can run on spot was uh, was made to made to run on this ANZ, which is for uh, for spot instances, right? 
So this way, uh, uh, you know, 90% of the services actually went from on demand. 90% uh, of the instances basically went from on demand to to spot, mm -hmm. which is again a huge win. Got it. Uh, but do you always get spot instances? <laughs> <laughs> Not always. Yeah. Uh, but we did some tricks uh, mm -hmm. to make sure that you know we get them most of the time, mm -hmm. right? Uh, so for example, uh, 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 on, on, while while creating spot AZs, right? will not give only let's say one particular amount of one particular type of insert type. Mm -hmm. We'll say okay, uh, there are four or five or probably you know six seven uh, uh, instance types, mm -hmm. and if any one of them is available on spot, give it to me, right? Mm -hmm. That's that's how we configure our ESGs, uh, and all we also also ensure that you know we could get uh, the nodes in any of the three ESGs, right? right? If any <laughs> any any of the three ESGs the instance is available, uh, we should get we should mm -hmm. be able to get it, right? Mm -hmm. So that's something that we did. Uh, we uh, we also and, if, and because uh, in all the scenarios uh, you cannot get a uh, spot mm -hmm. right there would be some rare cases where you actually don't get uh, mm -hmm. get a spot right and we don't want instances uh, applications to fail at that time right? right so what we did was we configured our class plus auto scaler to uh, to work in such a way that if no spot uh, instances are available at that time mm -hmm. then fall back to to uh, on demand right. uh, this is a very very rare activity for us but of course for uh, high availability, we had to do this, right? Wow. Uh, one more thing that we did was we enabled uh, price cap capacity optimized uh, setting on ASG, right. right? What this means is that if uh, at a particular point of time, if let's say uh, multiple kinds of instance types are available on spot, right? Then uh, cluster or then AWS will actually give you an instance type which is uh, which is uh, which is uh, the cheaper among them, mm -hmm. right? And that way, uh, you will always ensure that you know you are all, even when everything is on spot, you're still choosing uh, an instance which is you know cheaper among among all of them. Mm -hmm. So yeah, right. that's that's how we use the spot. So on that note, right? Like, what kind of instances are generally preferred at Resape? Yeah, uh, multiple kinds. Uh, so uh, when we are choosing, let's say, only one instance mm -hmm. instances, uh, we usually go for AMD because it's much much cheaper than than Intel instances. Uh, but we are choosing, but but in the uh, spot ESGs, uh, as 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 I said before, right? We we give various kinds of uh, instance types which are which could be uh, AMD, Intel, etc. Right. So yeah, uh, in spot and anything that is available uh, will be used. Mm -hmm. uh, one uh, so what we are also currently working on uh, on uh, moving our our applications to Graviton, Graviton instances, right? Because Graviton in theory is uh, is uh, has has much better cost to performance ratio, mm -hmm. right? Uh, in in the puff test that we've been doing till now, uh, the the claim of Graviton seems to be true, right? So uh, so whenever we, we go live in Graviton, I think we are going to have much uh, much a lot of benefits from uh, not only not only in terms of uh, cost but also in terms of performance, Got right? Uh, we've all already deployed Graviton instances on other um, uh, AWS resources like uh, like RDS, Elastic Cache, Elastic Search, etc., and we've had great results there. So probably we'll be moving in the direction where every every instance, every service will use Graviton. Yeah, that's where right. we are heading. Yeah. Cool. So after this the entire EC2 optimization, right? What was the next area that was uh, focused yeah. on? Yeah. So after EC2, the biggest cost was coming from uh, storage, mm -hmm. right? Uh, storage of multiple kinds, EBS, um, you know, uh, snap old snapshots, mm -hmm. volume. Uh, um, uh, S3 etc. Right. Mm -hmm. So um, so what we did for most for example, let's say in, in EBS was we uh, we moved away from GP2 and moved to GP3. Mm -hmm. GP3 is uh, roughly around 20 percent cheaper than, mm -hmm. than GP2. Uh, so that was an e easy thing to do. Mm -hmm. uh, on on S3, uh, you know, usually what happens is over the period of time, uh, you know, people kind of you know save old backups, old snapshots, uh, you know, uh, maybe for backup purposes or, or for you know compliance purposes on on S3. Mm -hmm. and and that cost actually keeps on increasing right mm -hmm. so we just did did a uh, uh, an activity where you know we audited all the data mm -hmm. right and deleted all the unwanted files or probably you know moved them to a more uh, cost friendly uh, uh, storage layer on mm -hmm. s 3 right uh, so yeah uh, one thing that that uh, we figured out was that uh, when you move data from S3 from one layer of S3 to other another layer mm -hmm. of S3, right? Uh, AWS actually charges for charges you for uh, data transfer, right? Uh, so then uh, then it, what can happen is that you know if you're moving a lot of, uh, a large amount of data, 
in the in the short uh, in the short uh, period for the short period right you can your billing can actually have a negative impact right so uh, whenever you try to do this you, sh you should always talk to your account manager in Resume, uh, in, in AWS and find out whether you know uh, making this change how is those, this going to impact your entire billing right uh, so yeah so even though we should always move the data to uh, to to the optimal storage layer storage mm -hmm. layers uh, do remember that in your, in for for the for the in, in, for for some time, right? The it can actually have a negative impact, and your billing can actually increase. Even though in the long run, it probably will, will be a good idea to do, mm -hmm. a good good thing to do. But in the, in the short run, it will it may actually become a problem. Got it. So yeah, so one more question, right? Uh, since Razorpay has you know multiple teams working on you know huge amount of different services, right? How would they track their cost? Because you know, once the application goes to production, right, the scaling activity, scale up activity, which you know, not every engineer would know. Okay, so how are we tracking this information and passing it to you know the relevant engineer team, engineering teams? Yeah, yeah, good question. I mean, uh, I mean, the services. I mean, what people usually do is look at their AWS bill, right? But mm -hmm. uh, but if you know your cost is actually increasing at a service level, mm -hmm. then uh, 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 then a uh, service as in a microservice level, mm -hmm. right? Then uh, the, the team will not get to know, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, let's say the entire onus of cost optimization is at is on one central team, let's say a, a DevOps team or infra team, right? Then they will never get to know these these uh, these minor details that mm -hmm. something somewhere happened in the, in the mm -hmm. service, right? So it's so it was one of the uh, most difficult or uh, biggest problems to for us to solve that mm -hmm. you know how do we give visibility at a service level, mm -hmm. right? So that uh, this becomes a more collaborative effort, mm -hmm. right? And, the, and every engineer, every 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 team mm -hmm. is uh, is actually looking at their cost and and, and you know, figuring out where what what is happening, how the cost costs are increasing or decreasing, right? So this was one one big problem for us to solve. Uh, so so initially, what we did was we, we tried solving this problem with with AWS Stacks. Mm -hmm. um, so we started tagging, uh, you know, uh, things like AWS three buckets, uh, RDS Aurora instances, Elastic Cache, mm -hmm. etc. Right. So, so all these, uh, you know, AWS resources we were able to tag, and because let's say every S three bucket is kind of all uh, more or less uh, assigned with one one team or one RDS instance will be assigned to one service, right? We were able to figure out uh, the cost of these resources mm -hmm. at, a, at a service level, right? Uh, but the biggest problem came up with EC two, mm -hmm. right? Uh, because we are on Kubernetes, uh, what happens in Kubernetes is that you know uh, uh, you have a set of notes, set of nodes, right. and on those nodes, uh, multiple pods from multiple services actually uh, run, right? Mm -hmm. And any pod that can probably let's say uh, go down on one node can come up on, on any other node, right? Mm -hmm. So it's very difficult to now correlate what kind of resources a pod is using for how many time it's running, right? You have to track track all these details in the at a very very minute level, yeah, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that is. Um, that and, and uh, again, you know, uh, with, with HP kicking in now almost almost uh, throughout the day, right? Uh, the pods will keep coming up, keep going down, right? Mm -hmm. So it, it it is a difficult thing to, to track. Um, or, and also because we are on spot, we have multiple instance types also, right? So uh, every instance is also not the same. Uh, so yeah, so it actually needed a lot of calculations and all. And it, even though it's doable, we, uh, we 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 decided that you know it would probably take a lot of efforts to build this. Yeah. So we started looking out for a new tool in the market, mm -hmm. right? Um, no, so after doing a lot of research, we found out you know Cloud Zero probably is the is the tool that we should go for, and we and we bought the subscription. Mm -hmm. uh, how Cloud Zero works is that it uh, its plugins right uh, sits within an EKS cluster, right. right, and keep looking for all these metrics, mm -hmm. right? When when is a pod up and coming up? How many uh, you know resources it's using, CPU memory, etc. When it's going down, what kind of instance type it's running on, etc. Right? So it will track all these things, right? And eventually come up with a date day, uh, with, with a daily report or or a, let's say a daily cost trend mm -hmm. of how a service uh, is is you know uh, is using the costing right. Pardon. So so what we did was so by doing all these things right by deploying Cloud Zero on our on our, on our clusters we were able to get details at a service level Got right. It. Not in, not only at a service level, but you know, you you, uh, you can get data at a let's say EKS cluster level at a name namespace level or, or as I said on a on a deployment deployment level, right? Mm -hmm. uh, so yeah, so by, by doing this this uh, this mystery of EC2 costing on EKS was solved, um, and um, by doing all these things right on on AWS resources and on EC2 with with Cloud Zero, we were able to track uh, around roughly ninety eight percent of the entire AWS costing, right? Uh, which meant that um, 
uh, I mean, I mean, uh, resources like uh, let's say ARV, uh, VPC flow logs, or or uh, or NAT gateways mm -hmm. were, were not trackable. Mm -hmm. But I think uh, that was something that we were okay to live with. Got it. So this cloud, you know, the Cloud Zero tool, it's a third party that. Third, is it a third party tool? Yeah, it's a third party tool, but okay. and, uh, and and it's uh, something that we that we had to buy. Got it. Got it. So basically, that gets installed in our production application. Yes, on uh, EKS business. Got it. Got it. So now that uh, you know, you mentioned that now the cost is attributed per team level. So what are the next uh, next steps you know to to be done by the teams? Yeah. So in Cloud Zero uh, dashboard, what you can do is you can create alarms. Right or, or alerts, right? So what we what we are doing is at a service level, or let's say at a AWS, uh, you know, S3 bucket level or our RDS level or whatever, right? At, at each of these component level, what we are doing is we are creating alarms, mm -hmm. right? And if any at any point of time, if uh, there is a considerable increase in the cost of any any component, then the service owner will be will be alarmed, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and and the some service and then that service will pro will look at that alert just like they look at any other product production buttons, right? right. By by doing this, what 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 is what has happened is that you know now at at every service level, the 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 the, the actual the, the actual team is now owning the the, the costing, right? Okay. And uh, that has actually made this a very collaborative effort. Uh, we, but we are also doing is you know we are making the we, we are ensuring that you know uh, in the in the monthly OPEX meetings, uh, these service teams come in and you know uh, showcase their, their 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 costing trends along with you know other OPEX metrics, right? And um, and whatever optimization that they have done uh, within that month, they will be able to you know showcase and and uh, make us make a uh, learn you know learn how how what they did and how they did right. Yeah. So that all the also becomes a very uh, collaborative and, and learning experience Got for it. everyone. Got it. Thanks, Ajay. Thanks for all the information. So that's it, folks. For now, uh, stay tuned for more Thank you. Bye.